10, 9, ignition sequence start, 6. Hello and welcome to Rocket Fuel. My name is Wack Wack Attack. Today is April 24th and um, yeah, I've got an exciting episode full of a whole lot of updates for you all. So let's get started. So as you know, Atlas went live last week. Um, I didn't have an episode on Friday. So um, there are a couple of things that I missed from uh, earlier on in the week. Um, but our users started um, getting their LEB8 mini pool uh, their validators online so here we had chaos saying that you know your validator has been processed by the beacon chain it's waiting to be activated and be activated in 41 seconds um and after chaos we uh, then chaos gave an update saying you know that chaos is live and uh, that's their first attestation it just went in so it's really exciting that um the leb 8s are all going online now um they're all looking really good everything's working the way it's supposed to um, and it's really wonderful, really, really, really great to see. Um, of course, the other side of that is that um, there's a queue now for um, the getting a mini pool started. So even though some people have got their started, there's a whole lot of people in the queue waiting for this. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the the amount of ETH that's coming in every day. But here, zero X scene said um, said. Um, with the current queue and 15,000 ETH a day average deposits, 45 quid uh, conversion costs, you need about 200 days of staking to cover the losses, gas plus waiting queue. So there's a whole lot of gas um, costs there that um, it's gonna take a while for you to get your rewards back. Um, and then um, Zero X Sheen said that, you know, they, they got their num numbers together. So um, here you see a different um, gas crossed and um, how many queue, how many mini pools there are in front of you in the queue um, and how long it will take you to break even. So for example, if you deposit a 15 GUI and there's um, 2,000 mini pools ahead of you, then it'll take you 90 days to break even. Um, whereas if you deposit at 130 GUI and there's 5,000 pools ahead of you, then it'll take over a year to break even on that um, cost. So um, mini pools, you know, they're, they're being spun up, but um, and we you know they're being converted and LEB eights are, are starting, but the the main thing that we need now is we need um, um we need um RE deposits. So talking about RE deposits, um this is one of my favorite pieces of news that's come out in the last couple of days. Um Jasper um, shared a screenshot of his talk with um, his conversation with Mark Zeller of Ave. Now I've mentioned Mark on this show like a whole bunch of times. Um Anything that happens with Ave, I think, kind of goes through Mark. And uh, a few months ago, he teased about um, about Ave E mode for our ETH. Now, E mode is uh, a, a kind of like a restaking um, looping um, service where you um, it makes it more efficient to deposit your um, our ETH, get ETH, swap the ETH for our ETH on the deposit contract um, in the deposit pool and then take that our ETH back to Aave um, and do that and swap it for ETH again and do that over and over again and E mode makes it a lot safer to do that a few times well multiple times potentially um, it is going to be something that could amazingly improve our um, ability to mint our ETH so Mark says that uh, Mark's on vacation and um, he'll be back soon I'm not sure how long Mark is going on vacation for, but hopefully he'll be back soon. And the sooner he is back, the sooner he can um, get emote stuff going through. Uh, of course, it's going to take a few days to um, maybe a few weeks to go through all the proper Aave governance uh, mechanisms. But once he goes through that, then I think it's going to be really wonderful. Okay, and then next, um, another integration that Rock ETH has, of course, is with um, MetaMask and um, you can use the MetaMask uh, wallet to buy, swap into LS, um, Lido's ST ETH or Rocket Pool's R ETH. Of course, there were a couple of things that um, were there to notice in, in the past because um, it was always the case that ST ETH showed a higher reward. Uh, however, now um, not only does R ETH have um, space in the deposit pool but it also has um, 
a higher reward than Lido. This is for the first time. As you can see in the screenshot that Jasper shared, uh, Rocket Pool's R ETH has 5.01% rewards and Lido's uh, ST ETH has 4.96% uh, rewards. Now, Jasper here says, notably, this may be. Uh, this may become a more frequent occurrence in the near future, even though La even though Lido, even though Rocket Pool charges a high fee, even though Lido charges a high fee. Um, Jasper says here, since, even though Lido charges a high fee, but I think maybe he means Rocket Pool charges a high fee, maybe a misunderstanding. And he says the new queue design that Rocket Pool implemented creates a passive APR boost, while the when the demand for node operators is too high as it is now. So I need to um, explain that a little bit more later in the episode. And Odin has an interesting question. He says, why are the rewards in dollar terms lower? So here it says estimated rewards, $8.03 per year and $8.65 per year. So I think maybe that might be like a lagging number, but I'm not exactly sure why that issue is there. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure why that issue is there. But um, the way that Metamask calculates these rewards and... Um, these percentages is kind of a black box. No one really knows how they do it. It's just, it was kind of a moment for celebration because this was the first time the rocket pool number was higher than Lido number. Okay, next um, we had uh, this comment um, from uh, Mage Style um, who says, hey guys, if you if you have friends that want to get into DeFi, could use some Areth. I made this little guy. So here there's a Medium article um, from um, Mage Style and um, it says, need one more reason to hold our wreath we've got you covered so then um there's it's a quick read um and it's got some reasons for uh, why you should hold our wreath so it says you know introducing our wreath the brightest star in the lst universe and then it tells you how you can get your our wreath and it links you to the rocket pool uh, deposit pool website and it says um if four percent is enough for you then there's more and then you know there's um telling you some different pools where you can get some really good um, tokens and rewards and then um, yeah it's just uh, telling you about how you can get um, stuff on curve finance convex finance um, silo finance um, there's uniswap uh, on arbitrum where you can get some fees um, optimism has beethoven x that gives you fees um, and then it says keep an eye on Gravita protocol, which will bring even more excite you, exciting use cases for our ETH. And it says always do your own research um, when using DeFi. And remember, this is not financial advice. So um, there's definitely some good ways to get information about what is happening with um, our ETH and what you can do with it, um, because it's a really, really great token to hold. Um, okay, so we already covered that. Um, so next we have this thing from Alchemex. It says we've just upped our ST ETH and R ETH vault caps. Um, ST ETH is now 5k um, wrapped ETH and R ETH is now 1k wrapped ETH. Get in while you can. So Alchemex is um, a protocol that lets you take loans against your deposits and then it uses the rewards that you would get on the deposit to pay back your loan. So it's a really smart um it's a really smart protocol that um, has some great, you know, uh, great backers and like um, great sentiment about it. I think it started Arith over a year ago, but there were some issues with the pool. I think if I'm remembering right, um, there were some issues with that. So they, they turned it off, but now they've turned it back on, which is really great to see. Um, and yeah, um, definitely have a look at that. See if it's something that you're interested in um, and uh, you can take loans against your Arith. Um you can't quite use it to fold because I think you get um, you get stable coins back. I think I'm not exactly sure. I like you all know. Like I'm not um, uh, DeFi DGen or anything like that. So I had there's big gaps in my knowledge about DeFi stuff. I think for Alchemix there was one way you could get their version of ETH Al ETH back, and there was another way where you could get. Um, a US, uh, USD equivalent um, token back. But um, I'm not sure exactly how this works out. Definitely go play around with those vaults. Remember, do your due diligence. Um, what you put in DeFi, you can lose all of it. Okay, next uh, we had this from uh, Mano Lodf, who says this is one example that if our ETH was a bit more integrated, just on that it would create more demand. So there's a screenshot here of, you know, um, other, other protocols using... Um, being able to uh, 
drive demand for their tokens, uh, you know, the LSTs by um, having integrations. So this is what we really need for Rocket Pool right now. We, you know, we need Emo to come through. We need other services like that to grow. We need people to start using them um, because once they start using them, then I think things are going to go really well really quickly. Emo, of course, is what I'm uh, hoping um, hoping on, and I think that is really going to. Um, really really like help rocket pool grow fast because uh, people will be able to like you know loop it they're staking like three or four times so every our eth demand that we have now we would have you know four five six ten times that demand equivalently if people are using emote um i don't want to make speculations on that of course because i'm not a DeFi expert like i told you but um from what i understand and from people who i really respect they're really excited about emote um here the um, um jasper had information from sturdy finance who are um putting a new uh, collateral backed uh, balancer stuff in place um they're putting this proposal through to add uh, our eth uh, wrapped eth as collateral to the eth market and then um, sturdy finance wants to start um, um that on balancer so there are integrations coming um there's a whole lot of integrations coming like every day there's more integrations than i can you know <laughs> cover there's just like an an amazing amount of integrations and we really need those you know for our ETH to keep growing and um, reach where we want it to reach to be able to um, push the demand for um, the node operators we have right now okay and then Jasper explains that sturdy finance um, uh, post that he made um, here he says um, check out this proposal to onboard aura finance our ETH eth bpt to study finance for leveraging yield farming users could one click deposit into a leverage position leave your comments and concerns so um there's um there's not too many comments or concerns so hopefully that you know will uh, be allowed to mature in the next few days and weeks and um, really good things will happen with that okay and then we have another integration here from the hop uh, protocol they're voting right now so it's not quite active yet but um there's a bridge fast bridging support for our eth uh, and then this was written by jasper and dibsy and it says this is a proposal for hot protocol to offer fast bridging support for our eth to optimism arbitrum and ethereum layer one uh, the rocket pool incentive committee will be offering rpl incentives to our eth uh, hop eth amm liquidity positions and optimism arbitrum to facilitate the process we're proposing a starting plan of 50 um, rpl 28 day period uh, in incentives per layer two with the intent to scale the amount as we support additional chains based on volume building across ecosystems one binding piece of the protocol uh, one binding piece of proposal be if hop protocol would consider matching uh, rocket pool with hop co-incentives we suggest twelve thousand hop per 28 days period over uh, per l2 and then there's all the information that you can go and read but the vote right now is absolutely amazing there's 2.2 million votes in favor of this which has already reached a quorum and then there's five hop tokens against it and uh, sorry 1.2 1.1 hop tokens against it and 5.4 hop tokens that abstained so this vote has already passed so um hopefully um it will get added to hop very quickly um and um yeah it's really wonderful to see that um superfiz who's a hop, big hop delegate voted in favor of this others um such as dibsy and uh, a whole bunch of other people voted bigly um fizz's reason says i support a high alignment between hop and rocket pool so that's really great um yeah so the integrations are coming and you know we we're doing some really really cool things with the integrations um we just need more <laughs> of course um next we have this um information from the beacon chain website and they have a list of all the different pools uh that staking pools that are there right now so there's you know the unknown pool there's lido pool um coinbase binance kraken and then rocket pool is right there um with 2.64 percent of the validator share um if you have a look then it's the information about their returns so rocket pool right now is giving a return of 5.73 um, which is one of the highest returns on the one day and also on the second uh, on the seven day this number is like kind of going up um, over the over the days but uh, it's trending towards the higher end of of those numbers as well so 
this this definitely um, is a nice stat to have a look at to see how the rewards rate of rocket pool is changing now i'm going to be talking a little bit later about why that's happening but we're just going to cover some more stats right now of you know one week after um, atlas let's see where we stand so the mini pool queue right now as it is is 2015 mini pools long um we're waiting not mini pools validators long um obviously some are eight eth some are six uh, sorry uh, yeah some are uh, eight eth mostly eight eth some are 16 eth but um we're waiting 200 2016 validators are waiting to be spun up so they're waiting for um our eth to come into the pool and um and get going a whole bunch of these are from dokia capital uh, they're getting to towards the top of the list we already covered that last week and then there's a whole bunch of others that are coming through as well of course like two thousand of them so that is showing like really steady um uh, demand for more uh, node operators is is the node operators are demanding more re which um, hasn't hasn't come up yet however if you look at the deposit pool numbers you can see that um, there's a trickle of um, decent sized deposits coming through um, and if you have a look at the the monthly numbers um, since launch in um, november 2021 um, we had two months where it reached thirty thousand, and april has already reached thirty five thousand four hundred. so even though you know we've got some days of april left this is still the biggest month um, for rocket pools our eth minting that has taken place so far um, if we have a look at the weekly uh, rates you know we're getting um last week we had um 16,000 uh our eth minted which is the biggest week that we've had so far um and then that and then two weeks ago is when you know when the deposit pool increased uh size increased and we had fourteen thousand minted that week but now you can see this is like organic growth that we were getting here um, last week and this week um even though the, it started yesterday um we've still got over two thousand ETH deposited into the deposit pool so the numbers are coming through like when you compare this to stuff like you know last um um, earlier this year you know we were getting like 1000 eth uh, 1000 eth a week and before that he was even lower like you know in september is 500 eth a week um which i think is one, no here 427 eth in june is the worst week that we've had so far um because you could buy a discount on the secondary market right at that point like that was when everything depegged but um these weeks that we're having right now are like the biggest weeks and april 16th last week was the biggest week we've had so far so that is looking really good this information of course is on the rocket scan website um the smoothing pool is also showing um some really good numbers this this uh this cycle so far um you know we're just a few days into it and we're already getting uh, we've already got 100 and we're, i think we're just under two weeks into it and we've already got 142 eth um that is partly because of gas prices being so high and there being so much demand on the on the yeah there's so much demand for gas and uh for volatility so when people want to you know make arbitrage opportunities then they spend more on gas the really great thing to have a look at here is how we've reached 14 uh, 1800 nodes in the smoothing pool and how that's over 10,000 mini pools now or 10,000 validators are in the smoothing pool so um these these are definitely like um you know um milestone milestone numbers 10,000 mini pools is is really really great to see so 58 percent of all uh, validators are in the mini pool and just under 75 percent of all nodes are in the mini pool as well okay and then like i said you know i was talking about the smoothing pool so here you know for example there was this 11 eth block that came into the smoothing pool and there's been a whole lot of instances of that kind of thing happening which is really great um another thing is happening is we're getting more big users actually joining the smoothing pool as well so it used to be that marceau and another um, anonymous whale were the biggest um users in the in the smoothing pool however if we have a look over here um to look at the bot for the smoothing pool i'm sorry i should have had this open before um, um if we have a look at the sm smoothing pool we will see now that there are sorry the bot is loading yeah there's um Marceau's actually gone down to number four even though he was number one for a while <laughs> this one that was in number three is one above i guess just to distinguish himself uh, or themselves and then we've got one here at 200 
and another one at 277. So the number of big um, node operators in the in the smoothing pool is going up too, which is really wonderful to see. Okay, um, and the consequence of all those mini pools that are waiting, uh, the validators that are waiting, is now we have the maximum deposit size has reached 80,000 ETH. So that means we can, uh, the Rocket Pool protocol can absorb um, 80,000 ETH to our ETH mint um, in one go, which is mind boggling. Um, I'm really waiting for those um, 10,000 ETH mints for our ETH. Um, I think it's just a matter of day before that, but days before that happens. Um, that's going to be really exciting to see. With the deposit pool now being at um, 80,000 size, that means that we have 52,000 ETH waiting um, as um, validators waiting to be spun up. And then the other 18,000 will take the the ETH from, uh, fill up the deposit pool. So that's where the 80,000 number comes from right now. But that is a huge amount of ETH that Rocket Pool can um, absorb. People are getting kind of scared about where that demand is going to come from um, and whether or not the protocol will stagnate because of that. Like, you know, if you're taking 2,000 ETH a day into the smoothing pool, into the deposit pool, then it'll take 40 days, just over a month for you to um, get staking again. And that is quite a long wait. So people are wondering what's going on with that. Of course, you know, those R ETH integrations that I was talking about earlier, especially E mode, will pretty much like wipe this out very quickly, I think. Okay, so um, you might be thinking, right, oh, there's all these um, validators are waiting and we don't have um, the R ETH demand, like the there's so much ETH sitting idly, it must be that the, the R ETH rate, uh, rate is going down. However, Fornax uh, says, I wrote a few words about Rocket Pool today, considering the massive node operator queue and how that actually boosts the R ETH yield. So we saw that the R ETH numbers were actually like some of the highest in the staking market. Um, so Fornax kind of goes and explains, he says, Rocket Pool awakens how self-balancing mechanisms bring, bring balance to the force. So he says, Rocket Pool is an innovative platform that allows users to stake on the Ethereum network with less capital required, earning extra rewards while contributing to the security network. It's permissionless protocol, which means anyone can stake their ETH without requiring any approvals. And it then explains how you can be a node operator or how you can invest in our ETH. And then um, it says, the the balance between those two is what the rocket pool requires and what it needs um and then he links to a forum post where it says proposal to turn idle q eth into productive eth um so let's explain what this means now so it says before atlas when node operator joined the mini pool um, mini pool creation queue waiting to be matched with deposits from our eth minters and the eth provided by the node operator would sit there idly Considering a queue with hundreds of operators, we could have had thousands of unproductive ETH in the system, um, actually having a negative impact on the R ETH APR, which is the opposite effect of what we want to create incentives for R ETH demand. After Atlas, when the node operator makes the deposit for a new mini pool, only one ETH is deposited in Beacon Chain, and the remaining ETH provided goes to the deposit pool and can be used to match and launch the first mini pool in the queue. This new ETH that becomes productive faster without any new R ETH being minted increases the our ETH APR making it more attractive. So this is the key piece of information here is that people who are waiting in the queue will actually be um, helping people ahead of them get their validators up and running and the rewards from those validators will be going to the our ETH holders which is where the boost of the reward is coming from. So this is what makes uh, our ETH rewards look so good right now um, and Fornex explains it really well in this article and you can go read the whole thing um, because it's really good but then you know there's a screenshot again of how um, the Rocket Pool's um, numbers are higher than Lido's numbers. So definitely go give this a read to try to understand what's going on. If you still have questions, pop into Discord. Um, you'll get some really good answers of people explaining what's going on there. So um, yeah, Phonix says, so we, uh, so we need to make people at the top of the queue know that they can manually call the deposit access collateral on this page to get unqueued. So there's a contract, you can write the contract. If you are in the queue, and you're waiting and there's ETH that you can be matched with, you can then um, call this contract to push along the process and get, get staking. Of course, that will cost you gas and gas is expensive. So it's up to you whether you want to make that decision or not to pay for the gas. But um, there's a way that you know you can get staking a little bit more quickly like that. Um, and then, of course, uh, there's another mechanism now as well is where 1% um, 
of the R ETH is um, kept aside for people who want to um, withdraw their mini mini pools. However, that one percent when it reaches above that, then that ETH can also start going into the deposit pool. Wait, actually, no. Let me let me explain that again. So it says um, the ETH on the R ETH contract is about to reach the one percent threshold, and rewards are going to start flowing to the mini deposit pool. So what happens is there's there's a R ETH contract, and the rewards for ETH get paid to that contract and it gets divided out across all our ETH holders. However, when there's too much ETH in there, then the new mechanism is that you can start um, you can start that going into the deposit pool as well to get the to get the queue moving quicker. It says if you were thinking about calling distribute balance, now would be a good time to help start the overflow. So here it says our ETH extra collateral. The current extra collateral stored in the our ETH contract is um, 2,600 ETH. That is 99.22% of the configured target of um, 1% basically, which is 2,623 ETH. That number has gone up since then. Um, but the the um because it tracks one percent of all our ETH. However, the excess amount is going to um start new mini pools. So that's where some of that those numbers are coming from as well. So this like creates a really like elegant uh, mechanism for getting pools uh, validators through the queues, and um, also at the same time increasing our ETH um rewards. So it's a really elegant system that initially Valdorf uh, came up with the idea. But then Fornax kind of like pushed for it and really like I think delved deeper into the ideas behind it. Um, Valdorf at the time didn't think it was worth it was all that valuable. But Fornax and maybe others as well. But I'm not sure. Um, sorry if I'm not giving you credit on this. Really like pushed that forward and um, came up with some good ideas to get it added to the Rocket Pool protocol. And it's it's really useful right now. It's working really nicely. So thank you Fornax for your great work on that. Okay, normally I start with software updates, but there's so much going on today that like the software updates are going to push really far back. Um, Joe here had an update a couple of weeks ago, uh, sorry, a couple of days ago saying, um, attention uh, node operators, we just released smart node version 1.9.3. This is a recommended update for all users as it includes many client updates, some of which are high priority. An important uh, update for meaningful pool bond reduction and it significantly reduces CPU loads when metrics are enabled. So that was really great. Um, key changes updated Bisu, uh, Geth, Nethermind, Lighthouse, Prism, Grafana, and Prometheus. And then um, it's just running um, Rocket Pool reduce bond and the automatic bond reduction system will now require distributing your fee first because I think some people failed with that. So if you're in the smoothing pool, if you um, fee distributor has zero balances, you'll be unaffected by this. Um, that was one of the things that came up with um, a bug that Dibzy found. I'll be talking about that later. Um, automatic bond reduction will no longer force the reduction at the current market gas price after 24 hours of eligibility. It will simply check the gas price against your specified threshold every few minutes and allow the bond reduction to time out if too long has passed. And the automatic mini pool balance distribution and automatic bond reduction can now be disabled entirely by setting your auto transaction. Um, auto transaction gas threshold to zero in the service config to UI. It says the node will now um, only calculate the network's total effective RPL stake every hour instead of every time a Grafana update happens every five to six minutes. This will reduce the CPU loads, load caused by the node process for all users, but will be especially apparent to Nethermind and Bisu users. And after this change, the total effective RPL staked and APR for next RPL checkpoint charts in Grafana will only update every hour. And then there's issues with uh, Nethermind uh, updates and more information about Oracle DAOs and stuff there as well. So give those release notes uh, a read if you're interested in that, but update your system because this is a recommended um, update. And for some users, it has high priority updates. So get upload, updated to the recent, most recent version, please. Okay, next we have this um, post from Patches where he has some ideas about um, new um, rewards tree generation. He said, I've got some proposals I'd like to see work their way into a rewards tree generation. One, mini pool performance file should no longer track performance for mini pool during the portion of an interval where its node was not opted in. Two, order rewards should be pro rata based on the time they accept the invitation, not the time the node was registered. 
and three exiting a mini pool during an interval should not make it ineligible for rewards until the following interval it will still receive pro rata share of the eth for the attestations it made while still active and a pro rata share for the rpl for the time it was active i may have more but i think these things are all inch purely towards fairness and not away from it so i want to put them on the table before i forget and then edit i believe that only one of these can be included without any community votes item one since it doesn't change the rewards just the artifacts um, item two and three um, require community votes and here are some sentiment polls um, so 100 percent people voted yes for both of those and 50 sorry yeah 100 percent people voted yes for both of those and a35 you had a really good comment saying community sentiment is going to be like it doesn't already work like that <laughs> which uh, i definitely um um would be the case i think for a lot of people but those are really good updates i really hope they get added the fairness of course is always a good thing okay um ken says here are some of the ideas um that i've gathered up from various places and discussions about uh, what should be in the next uh, rocket pool update he says i'll get these to dondo.eth post in the forum if anyone wants to edit revise comment them um or add to the draft feel free so let's have a look at the post that can put together he says um, atlas post atlas roadmap ideas so here claim all eth rewards transaction um, dvt research and integration eigen layer integration faster tree generation it says patches may have already solved this problem and joys incorporating some solutions into the smart node stack and then forced exits uh, which is really important um, hiring expand the team um, l2 interfaces um, like can we claim eth and rpl using l2 is there any value for doing so does this make sense for rocket pool to pursue and then leb4s which would be nice um market integrations about um our ETH being used as a fundamental token um how we can like you know uh, develop collaborations integrations and alliances marketing and branding stuff mev penalties ODAO design new remuneration um pbs uh pdao design RPL use cases, um, technical debt cleanup, transparency, um, smoothing pool for solo stakers, uh, second node, watchtower client, mini pool contract, smart node, HTTP API, and split ETH credentials, um, how you can um, exit uh, mini pools, dissolve pools, um, and tokenomic research, and... Um, Universal is taking a service contract, um, universal variable commission, website redesign, uh, web, uh, Windows GUI for staking, and Windows Smart Node Stack. So these are uh, ideas that came through in alphabetical order from the community. Um, some of those, of course, you know, will kind of work their way to the top of the list of priorities. Of course, you know, you can't put everything into an update. Like, you, we only have a finite number of people working on this stuff. So this i think is a really good list uh, there are a few things that i would like to see developed but um yeah it's going to be exciting to see how that um what you know the the conversations come around for what will make it into the roadmap i'm very excited to see how that'll play out okay then i mentioned a little bit ago about um dibsy's um issue that he had with um getting um uh, the distribution right um divsy is not in the smoothing pool and um saw there were some discrepancies with the amounts that were coming up and the, i really like this um, comments i wanted to include it uh, blue avm .eth said another best part is the team members listened to divsy's concern did analysis within a few minutes of a turnaround time the team accepted and shared the analysis which is a huge thing it only happens in rocket pool and then joe says it it was this i didn't really think about it at the time but the total rtt from initial report to announcement was like 10 minutes so i think that was really great that uh, we were able to um that we were able that uh, joe says you know i want to get something off my chest really quick i've been thinking about it. let me see if i can find it so um joe i guess was just really proud you know of like how quickly the team was able to respond to this and um do that work to uh, have a quality of life increase for the community um next is something i'm really happy about that hopefully will bring lots of node operators to rocket pool here we have dap node um, sharing a screenshot of um, a wallet or ro rocket pool integration into their um, into their system i've never used dap node i've had a look at it in the past but um, it's very like you know intuitive um, node operation um, it does a lot of stuff uh, in a in a really seamless way for users uh, so the fact that they are uh, integrating rocket pool i think is 
really wonderful uh, to see. Um, I think it would it would really help uh, Rocky Pool get a nice new bigger share of uh, node operators, which is great. Um, next, um, I had this uh, tweet thread from Sleepy on his Token Motion um, Token Motion uh, Twitter account. Um, it basically gives a a full detail of atlas and all the information that's going into atlas and it's an animated thread with 14 tweets so it says rocket pools atlas upgrade has arrived and brought with it huge scaling improvements for the protocol here's an animated three so it tells you of how um, like a recap of how you can stake your eth and then it says you know how it works with the, these really beautiful images that sleepy put together um really really wonderful work um sleepy of course gets a grant from the pdl for this um really explaining the information well and um the images i think really help um kind of explain how um how um, it all comes together so you know the community responded to this thread really well they really liked um, the content of it and like how how sleet was able to present the information i've shared this thread with a whole bunch of people to get them to understand exactly what's happening with this one and, and sleet's first thread to get them to understand how um rocket pool um, staking happens uh, so uh, thank you so much for this leety that was a really really beautiful thread that you put together and i can't wait to see what you come up with next okay uh, there have been a whole bunch of media coverage for um, rocket pool um, recently uh, one of the things that really caught my mind was this um, part of uh, the bankless weekly uh, roll-up episode that happened on friday um, in the episode uh, ryan and david spent a big chunk of time talking about the atlas upgrade to rocket pool um you know they used like superlative language which was really nice of them um really really great um coverage that they gave rocket pool here um talking about how you know it's primed for big things um there were a couple of small mistakes in the coverage but it wasn't wasn't anything egregious um the timestamp for the coverage is uh, around an hour and five minutes uh, yeah just before an hour and five minutes so go ahead and give that a watch the rocket pool section is just like three minutes long or four minutes long so uh, there's not much to cover i watched the review uh, the uh, re the <laughs> the weekly roll up every week um i love it it's a really really good show um so I, I i watched it anyway but if you haven't seen it then definitely go and give those um that a watch the timestamp is in the description below okay um next is this really exciting thing that's kind of happening on the dl and kind of came out over the last few days um mark marco had this um, thread where he says uh, rocket pool node operators alert uh, run dvt help decentralize ethereum and earn additional rewards how and the youtube video to um it's the title run rocket pool and ssv node together so uh, marco then goes on to explain what he's done he says i have set up rocket pool with dvt node connected to ssv network and created this video tutorial from it doing this you will become a part of the GT dvt network and let users let um, stakers use your dvt node help them decentralize their setup and get paid for it um, it helps the eth staking uh, ecosystem be more decentralized in two ways dvt network has more independent operators more diverse um, the set the better and it encourages the dvt use validators run it um, themselves more decentralized uh, a single one can be run from multiple countries and how hard is it to run that it's easy and um how do i run it and then there's the information how to do it and what are the risks um it says you know kind of get slashed there's no slashing risk the magic of dvt is that it allows validators to run even when some of the operators go offline or misbehave um you if you perform poorly stakers see it and will not choose you as simple as that no collateral needed so um marco tagged me in this saying uh, what do you think um and we got a really interesting reply here from Marceau saying, uh, I'm already running a Rocket Pool mini pool in a DVT cluster with a wink. And Marco says, nice. Uh, this is about running DVT nodes for others to use, not decentralizing your setup though. Um, and Marceau says, that's what it is. No internal key management, but using peers to decentralize, maintain uptime, etc." Um, and I said to Marco, I'll give you a shower and rocket fuel on Monday. So hi, Marco, if you're watching. <laughs> but then we got some more information about what Marcel was talking about over here. So Joe later had this screenshot um, of a Grafana dashboard. And um, let me see if I can make it bigger. 
yeah, there's a Grafana dashboard and there's some information about a cluster hash and some girly and people are kind of having a look and the peer name is Funny Toy. Um, and it seems like there's four peers here, Funny Toy, Fantastic Game, Favorable pe Pencil and Optimistic Food. So like what's going on over here? What does this mean? Um, it's got you know information about latency and um, who the attester is at a certain point and what's going on over here. So um, people right away started to guess what it was. Uh, Jasper says it looks like a Grafana dashboard and Proof of Bake says, is it DVT? And then Joe says, ding, ding, ding. Jasper says, oh, sh and um, Joe says, um, that my friends is an OBOL DVT solution running on top of Rocket Pool, which is absolutely amazing. Um, I don't know why I didn't give this emojis before because it's definitely worth them. Um, we got a little bit more information that came through. Um, Joe shared a screenshot of a conversation he had with Marceau. Marceau says, I'm talking to Redacted on the OBOL team. They're building a DVT solution on top of the Rocket Pool stack, probably as a proof of concept. They're looking for four operators to run a girly DVT Rocket Pool node. So far, it's me plus Redacted plus Redacted. Want to join and be our fourth? I know you've got a million things going on, so no obligation. Joe, of course, said yes to this. Um, Joe uh, followed up that comment with there. Don't nobody ever say Marceau did nothing for the peoples. And then Sneaky says, I freaking love Marceau. Um, and Valdov says, anyone who says this is blind, they're unfortunately unable to read your post. <laughs> I like that. Uh, Astanita says, we like Marceau. We want him back, but not because of this. We already liked him before all of this. And Joe says, that's my weekend bread. Um, but this is a thing. Um, so this is a thing, you know, like people are already working on DVT for Rocket Pool. Um, it's amazing. And then we got this really nice um, post. Dibzy had a comment saying, can someone please explain like M5, what the practical impact of this will be. So Valdorf, um came across with these reasons. He says, Dibzy and four friends don't have enough ETH to run LEB 8 themselves. They split up a validator to run one together. So they could provide two ETH each and 0 0.6 ETH of RPL each. Um, and the four of them could get together and run a validator together, which would lower the threshold a lot. And then it says, Dizvi is a whale uh, that wants to have a uh, HA set up for their 500 mini pools. They split it all up the validators and run it in several places. So that means that, you know, they can um, maximize their uptime, make sure that there's uh, no issues with that. And then it says, Dibsy is part of the DAO that wants to run some mini pools. They split up the validators to five trusted DAO members to run. Dizvi and four friends have few LEB 8s each but have rare internet issues. They split up their validators and run them together for a better performance. Um, Val says these are cool, but I think they're pretty minor drivers for both overall RP growth and overall RP performance. So one of the things that I've talked about on Rocket Fuel before is how Rocket Pool's performance tends to be a percentage or two percentage points lower than basically our other staking service uh, rivals. And that's because, you know, we're hobbyists, we're not professional node operators. We people are running these nodes at home people you know have internet connectivity issues hardware issues all of that kind of stuff they don't have redundancies in place like uh, generators or uh, power backups and that kind of stuff they're at the whims of the isps all that kind of stuff so rocket pool you know the effectiveness rating is a little bit lower um i think val's comment here about how it's a minor driver for rp performance i'm not exactly sure if i agree with val here of course, there are a couple of caveats. The main one being, you know, what would the adoption of this be? Val's mentioned a few times about um, there being a possibility of like Sybil um, issues with a DVT, um, running them in a, in a, like, in a um, stake squad together. Um, you might be beholden to people who are in your squad with you and can kind of do griefing stuff attached to that. So there still are there still is research to work out on this but um it's actually um really nice that you know we might be able to get those effective numbers up by a percent or two which of course would mean higher re rewards right and that is a huge driver for rocket pool adoption so i think i'm s slightly more optimistic about this than valdorf is um however i don't think it's going to impact rocket pool to the greatest extent so i kind of agree a little bit with val, val there as well okay next i want to cover this uh, update from gravita protocol i mentioned them i think last week or the week before as well and it says imagine breaking our code and winning one hundred five thousand dollars. get ready anon our 
audit competition with Hats Finance goes live on April 24th. Of course, today is April 24th. So the audit competition is live now. Um, it ends on May 8th. So you've got two weeks basically to um, probe around the code and see what you can find. They must have a tier of prizes. I'm not sure what it is. It says to register, turn notifications on, uh, opt in wallet to wallet notifications and join our Discord for updates. Um, but I think they had a... Um, they had a medium article last week let me poke around on their twitter and see if i can find anything um yeah it says to ensure a fair and transparent competition we're pleased to share the scope contracts for the gravita audit, audit competition across all our channels and then there's a github there where you can have a look at that um yeah and then they've just been promoting the competition so if you are you know DeFi inclined you can read solidity and coding um and you know you are competent with that stuff then definitely go and check out this uh, competition because there's cash money to be won um gravita i'm really excited about because they are using our ETH as one of their cornerstone integrations um so that of course is really great so um Good job, Gravita. I really hope that, you know, the audit stuff goes well in the next couple of weeks because we will um, see some really good stuff coming from them. I think um, maybe if everything goes well, maybe by the end of May or maybe at the latest they might be, uh, well, I don't want to put timelines in there. Maybe at the end of May, maybe in June, but hopefully soon. I'm going to finish this episode um, with a comment from Joe. Um, and Joe here says, I'm pleased with version 1.9.3 of the smart note stack. And I think it's a great note to end on. So with that, I will consider Atlas a rousing success, the smart node a rousing success. And I can safely leave it alone for a bit. So I'm going to clock out and do as little as possible. Please don't shower me with pull requests for a week. And then Kane says, have a good rest. So this week we talked about it at Rocket Fuel last week that, you know, uh, Joe will be taking some time off. I think he'll come back to work next Monday. So Sunday eastern time but monday australian time um so i hope he really has a good week off of course you know joe um he says away from keyboards dude dudes enjoy life but um kane says he'll be back and kane was right because just a few minutes later um joe's back he says everybody here is a node operator so people are just like joe get out of here like what are you doing um go 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 home like you're done so he says okay okay fine i'm away from keyboard but of course joe uh, can't stay away for too long because he is one of us truly um and he's been popping into trading every day since then so joe if you are listening to this get away from discord to delete the app from your phone um go bowling go like tinker with stuff that you love doing and um we'll see you next week other team members, I know that, you know, they're not quite as open as Joe is with their, what's going on. But I really hope that other members of the team are taking some time off as well. And um, using this time to, like, kind of recharge a little bit after um, an amazing success that Atlas has been. Um, it seems like everything's kind of under control. And if things are going horribly wrong, then we'll ping you a whole bunch of times. But please, guys, take some time off. All of you, whoever's listening and watching this, um, you totally deserve it. And um, we'll be ready for the next steps in in a few weeks time so um thank you everyone for watching listening and being part of the rocket fuel um, sub community um i will see you all tomorrow bye